Okay, hello, RC or Rank Carcass. I am going to be doing a video on technology and global war, 1936 to 1945. Um, I got a current game in progress, so ignore all these magnets scattered all over the place. The only thing you really need to know, and I'm just going to slide these over so I can slide these onto the line here, the actual magnets. Um, these printed roundels that are on there mean that this stage is already complete for that country. It's like a bonus, right? So Germany, you'll notice, has a lot of bonuses. Uh, Japan's got one, the U.S. has got one, Russia's got one, and the British have one. So that's it. There's 13 options, 13 different technologies, and they work really basically. Um... There's four stages, stage one, stage two, stage three, and then the fourth stage, once you get that, you got it. So if your round was already printed on the map, you get like a bonus. You don't need to get stage one. You go immediately to stage two if you're that country and that's your printed roundel. So for example, Germany and Russia would both, if they roll heavy armor, go immediately to stage two because they already both have stage one. All right, um, technology, tech rolls are, um, technically technology doesn't start till July 39 in this game. I have a house rule, actually I have two house rules. One I borrowed from General Hand Grenade, where at the start of the game you roll a free tech roll, and everybody gets whatever that is, and you just roll a d12 and pick the one you don't want, and whatever one, say you just say I don't want, Advanced subs, if you get a 7, you then get number 13 instead on a D12. All right. Uh, that's one option. And the other option I have is I like to do allow everybody one tech roll per turn starting in 1936. They just can't use any of their tech until July 1939. Because it's unrealistic that nobody would be advancing any technology like the scientists are just all sleeping and they're working on how to make velcro or something and um then all of a sudden oh look at that we started a war and now we're going to start working on making better artillery or better aircraft or better ships that doesn't make any sense that's not how real life works so and if you follow this rule you're never going to get any tech going on like the, the actual game rules you're not going to have any tech active until the earliest January 1941 so you know this way you can at least possibly have one maybe two like Germany's got two active I just finished the you know they worked this that went up and now they're working on a bunch of other ones all right there's that's it done the two possible house rules you got a third one or a fourth one throw it in my comment section I love options on house rules I might have one but uh, if you got one that works better, or I can combine mine with yours, why not? That's the whole point of me telling you what my house rules are. All right. Um, every single one of these stages costs a roll, or costs $2 to buy a roll for each one of these. It doesn't matter which one. Each one is going to cost you $2 to buy a roll. So you're basically buying one die, and you can only buy one die per turn, on each one right so if you're buying heavy bombers die you can only buy one die right so that turn you can only roll once as that country on that one if you want to buy a second tech roll that's cool but it can be anything except for the one you already bought one on so let's say heavy bombers and jets done now if you buy a third roll it can't be jets and heavy bombers it has to be something else right so and specify which one you're rolling before you roll it because uh, as you'll notice there's a 9 or higher there's a 7 or higher and there's an 8 or higher those are the three options and you know oh I rolled a 12 so it was this one but I rolled a, an 8 so it wasn't that one it was one of these two you know we avoid that kind of problem call your roll before you roll it easy all right, so that's that. Um, now you're rolling a 12-sided die. So if you get seven or higher, 
that's uh, 7 through 12, that's 50%, right? That's half of the dice, half the dice sides. So you got a 1 and 2 chance. If you're rolling 9 or higher, that's 9 through 12, that's one. Uh, that's 4 out of the 12 sides, so that's a 1 and th 3 chance to get it, right? 1 and 8, somewhere in between the two. So, um, you know, those are your options. So think about it, plan ahead, whatever. I'm going to do... Um, <clears throat> maybe one, maybe two videos on tech. I'm for sure going to do a video on advanced artillery, advanced mechanized, heavy armor, jet aircraft, heavy bombers, advanced submarines, because those are all unit-based ones, and the rules are slightly different on those. And then, depending on how long the video is, I'm going to throw in another, either at the end or a, a second video on long-range aircraft, Advanced anti-submarine warfare, strategic rockets, radar, wartime economy, improved ship factories, and improved shipyards. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of examples uh, verbally on what your options are and um, when they may be useful or maybe not so useful. All right. All right. So let's uh, just get started. I tighten this up too much. There we go. Let's rotate this thing around here. Now I got it all cockeyed. <laughs> Sorry, folks. There we go. Anyway. Okay. So, let's look at some units first. Um, let's start on the left here. And we're just going to start with... Uh, advanced artillery so you got a regular artillery sculpt right you want to show advanced artillery you got two options well there's actually a third option I'm gonna just um, show you a couple example ships here too right but you can do this as well I do these uh, paint identifiers so I know what what type of units what right now I'm um, I used yellow for my cruisers, and I used red for my destroyers, and I did that for every sculpt in the game. All my, so, you know what, if you pick pink, or green, or blue, or black, or whatever color you want, and say, you know, either do all ends, and say that's a heavy whatever, or you can do both, and you can say have one end red, to mark it as a destroyer or a fighter and do the other end whatever your heavy color is so that you can say okay this is a heavy destroyer you know what i mean those are some options so your pick but what i've been doing since i'm sometimes you need lots of these sometimes you need lots of these i don't have a i mean i got a pile of sculpts but i don't have that many sculpts so i've been doing it this way we're regular artillery piece and then i use the same artillery piece just sitting on top of a a marker roundel or a, a, a marker chip and find one that uh, that will um, sit on top of uh, your counters and lock in and it's perfect um, or you can do something else like this is a, a uh, what is it self propelled artillery I got a couple of these from historical board gaming when I ordered some stuff I just picked up a pack of five of them in white so I could paint them whatever color I want kind of like them kind of don't I'm not sure if it's worth me buying them for everybody maybe if I add in uh, self-propelled artillery it'll be worthwhile but just as advanced artillery it doesn't come up often enough for me to want to do that um, now we have mechs so a regular mech and then you can put it on on a, a colored color chip right or you can use uh, an alternate sculpt this is the one I actually use for or they sell as a motorized I've been using those as motorized or um, infantry or you have this one here it's exactly the same as the axis and allies piece but historical ga board gaming makes it it's got a nice uh, you know open open top so it's very different from this the closed top standard piece right so there you go uh, another thing, you know, if 
fighter on a chip or you can I picked up these uh, jet fighter pieces from historical board gaming same thing with uh, tanks mm -hmm. uh, this is a standard axis and allies tank sculpt and the one above it is the British um, what do you call it uh, the British uh, I know this one Churchill right and then uh, just for size comparison here is a light tank. I believe this is a Stuart. I could be wrong on that because it's been a while since I ordered them and they had a couple of options. But uh, yeah, right? Historical board gaming's heavy tanks and, and light tanks. You can obviously see the size difference or if you want to, you can do the painted color option thing, right? So there you are. Um, now on to heavy bombers like this is the standard German heavy bomb or strategic bomber and you can buy a sculpt like this to be a uh, their your new uh, heavy bomber however I use these as medium bombers because it was cheaper to just buy a few strategic because I don't use those as often so I use this as a strategic and I just put one on a sculpt or on a color chip there and say that's a heavy bomber there's an option or you can do it this way it's up to you it's uh, your game make it yours and same thing with subs I just do this with my subs or you can say have a color you paint them as heavy subs or buy a different sculpt I know they do sell sculpts for it I they just didn't have it in every country and I didn't feel like buying a whole pile of black ones and then painting them in the unit colors or the country colors and then you know spreading them around so this is what I'm doing or you can buy a different version of the game like I know some of the some of the subs have different shapes and different versions of the game. And you can maybe use that as a as an option. Alright, so there's that. Those are the the units that you can pick up. So just a couple of options for sculpts, right? Like there you go. Just a generic option. The thing I like about this game, you can make this game any way you want it. You won't have to do it my way. Now, I'm going to show you something about uh, the uh, tech advanced units for your for your game. Uh, this is the back of the uh, British sheet, and you'll notice, you know, of course, they you have tech advances, and each one of these advanced artillery, advanced mech. Heavy armor, jet aircraft, heavy strategic and advanced submarines, just like those sculpts I was showing you. You have costs, you have movement, you have defense values, you have attack values. And sometimes certain countries will have an alternate version of uh, a heavy armor that specifically comes out at certain times. I know Germany's got one. Uh, or you may buy a sculpt from historical board gaming that's got different stats than these. Honestly, every sheet's going to be slightly different on some stuff. Follow the sheet for your country. It's the most accurate. And the reason I'm telling you that is... In the, in the game rules, I have currently version 1.2, which is the newest version of the rules. So here, starts on page 29. You got your same tech chart I have on the wall. I just printed mine in black and white because it's the second version of rolls I printed out. And who knows, there might be a third or a fourth. So I'm not going to be too excited about uh, spending extra money to do it in color for like 70 some pages. All right. Especially when there's so many photos on all the pages. So, All right. And here just to, describes when you can do it. You can only buy one one die for two bucks for each tech per turn and blah 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 so all that stuff i already told you in the intro looking at my board with the magnets on the wall there you go um so yeah obvious stages of development it goes over how you can do that whatever done so here's a quick example um Advanced subs, it's got attack, defense, move, and cost. This may be different on your sheets than the book. Same thing with the heavy strategic bomber. I know for sure it's different in everybody's sheet than what the uh, 
the um, jet aircraft here is listed. I believe the move is actually four and the cost is 12. You'll notice that this, these two are identical to the heavy bomber. I don't know, there might have been an editing issue of some form. You'll also notice the advanced mechanized, it moves less than uh, is detailed in in the national sheets, your, your build charts. So follow your build chart for your country. They're all different. They're all specific to that country. These things are just generics. Don't follow these, follow your sheets. And yes, if you're the German sheet, it might be different than the British sheet. So if you're the German player, maybe you wanna be allowed to look at the British players. Part of the rule is you are allowed to look at other people's national sheets. There's extra rules on there that not everybody knows. All right, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, and we're going to cover advanced artillery. So, basically all this is, once you get the tech, it just, you've figured out ways to use your artillery in better ways, better sights, better, better loader, better whatever, right? Better ammo, who knows what it is. Um, so, it still retains all the characteristics of regular artillery. The only difference is it gets plus one attack and defense. Same cost, same movement, but the plus one attack and defense, right? So once you build this, all these units I've shown you can only be built in the home country, right? So if you're, let's use the U.S. for example, because uh, their home country is the lower 48 states between Canada and Mexico, continental, not islands, not Alaska, that's it, right? So you can't build a factory in the Philippines and place advanced artillery. They have to be built in the home country and then transported away. All right, same thing with Germany. You can't build one in a captured Polish base. You gotta build it at home in German starting territory. All right, so that's advanced artillery. All it is, same cost, built in home country, plus one attack defense. And they still have first strike and they still support an infantry and blah, 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 right? So not a horrible option, especially for anybody on a ground game. Um, anybody who's doing any kind of ground, ground units, they're cheap, four bucks, you know. Britain could use these. Italy could use these. Uh, Germany, Russia, even the U.S. Anybody could really use advanced artillery. Even Japan could. You could use those wandering through China. They attack the same as a light mech, so why not? Or as a light uh, tank. All right, and then we have advanced mechanized. The only real difference on uh, a regular mech, it's the same as a mechanized. Um, cost is the same. Move is incorrect here. Like I said, it still moves two. It's just plus one attack, plus one defense. And so over regular mechs, same deal, any mechs you make after you have this tech. So this doesn't affect your old mechs and, the, and your old artillery. You have to build new ones that are these, right? All the artillery you have on the map doesn't just change into advanced artillery. You gotta build them for all these units. So advanced mechanized, plus one attack, plus one defense, and you compare two advanced mechs with one tank on a blitz instead of a regular mech where you can only pair one per tank all right there's that now let's move on to heavy armor of course see. Eh? all right let's zoom that out just a touch there there we go so heavy armor is advanced versions of tanks obviously thicker armor thick bigger guns so all heavy armor has a target selection at one on armor class units. And it has uh, the same blitz as a regular medium armor, right? So the only difference is plus one target select and it's gonna be plus two attack and plus two defense over the regular um, tanks, which are six and five, same movement, and it's gonna cost $2 more. So you're paying an extra $2 for plus two attack, plus two defense and target selection. But these are a new unit, no heavy armor or no regular armor can be upgraded to heavy armor unless there's some kind of crazy expansion you're using. There's lots of those in this game, so I'm just gonna leave that at that. All right, um, now we go to jet aircraft. 
Ooh, I'm starting to wander again. There we go, let's lock that in. So jet aircraft is jet engines on a plane. These ones are fighters. In this game, the only jet aircraft you can get is a fighter jet. Unless you buy a fancy sculpt, it's some kind of crazy fighter or jet bomber or whatever. But I'm just talking generic without buying expansions or sculpts or whatever that have set rules. So what it is, it's a fighter. Same as a regular fighter. Only difference is it's got an attack and defense plus two. It's got a different cost. This is wrong, obviously. Every sheet is different from this. Don't follow this. Use the sheets. And this move is wrong as well. Every sheet has a move of four. So move of four cost of 12, I believe, is the same on every sheet. There might be one or two different. So check your uh, build charts. So all this is, is it, it attacks plus two, defense plus two. Same thing, this uh, number in brackets with the asterisks there. That's your attacking or you're sending them in with your bombers to go attack something as escorts. So when there's a, that escort round or the intercept round, you're rolling at five against the enemy planes that may be scrambled to intercept your thing, right? Or on defense, if you fly these jets up to intercept a bombing on your land zone, they get to intercept at a five, right? Five or less to shoot down those enemy enemy planes. That's a significant increase. Regular fighters are at threes for that. So good to know. All right, um, we're gonna move on to the next page here. I just gotta adjust my camera here for a second. All right, heavy bomber. Again, like a, like all most of these other ones, these are newly built units. So these are heavy strategic bomber. Um, basically, the only difference is a regular strategic has a combat uh, or sorry, carpet bomb attack on units. Um, right, carpet bombing, which is. Um, 3d12 at 2 and this one's got um, an attack of 5d12 at 2 all right uh, it's got a defense of 2 and its defense is 2 if it gets attacked on on, a, on an intercept right or escort um, intercept or you know whatever that air combat the, of interception and escorting um, it's got a move. I don't know if this is accurate. It says a move of six, but I think the sheets might be different. So like I said again, double check your sheets. So far it's the same as the British. Uh, move of six, cost of 15. Now, um, yeah, five dice at two copper bomb. This one does 3d6 strategic damage if you decide to bomb a facility. Whereas a regular strategic bomber does 2d6, right? So a maximum of 12 for a regular bomber, and this one's got a maximum of 18. Minimum of 3, maximum of 18. Regular strategic bomber's got a minimum of 2, maximum of 12. So, you know, it does have a bit more punch. And that is um, an option. All right. Um, I'm going to now cover advanced subs. So basically an advanced sub is obviously better technology, engines, body, design, blah, blah, blah. Um, regular subs, convoy rate at plus two. Coastal subs at plus one. These advanced subs, convoy rate at plus four. Advanced sub can only be attacked during the attacker's combat phase by blah, blah, blah. Same, same rules as subs, right? Same rules as regular subs on everything in here. They do, however, have an increased attack and defense value over regular subs. A regular sub has an attack and defense of three and a cost of six for the British and an advanced sub has an attack and defense of four, so plus one on each, and it only costs one extra dollar. And the convoy raise better, so. You know, those are your options. So really, anybody who's any kind of naval power who's building a bunch of submarines and might be doing uh, convoy raids or just wants to throw some sub some advanced subs in with their um, in with their uh, navy these things attack and defense is the same as the destroyer um, they're harder to detect so they're an option for anybody who's a naval power especially if you're doing convoy raids 
um, heavy strategic, unless you're doing a ton of um, strategic bombing on, say, Germany bombing up their factories, or you're bombing out Japan's factories, or you're Japan bombing out India's factories, or you're Germany bombing out the British factories. Unless you're doing that stuff, this is really not a big deal. If you got lots of regular strategic bombing you're doing, then sure, fine, buy these. Otherwise, no, it's a lot of money. It's a one in, one in three chance of getting the tech four turns in a row, and then you got to spend an extra three bucks for these units over a regular strategic. So you might you might be uh, losing your mind on that. Jet aircraft, anybody who's got fighters, these will be handy. They're expensive. They cost 12 bucks instead of the 10 for a regular fighter. Plus two attack and defense though. So you really, if you put two of these on a carrier, you're flying around with two battleship hits, right? Plus eight, you know, eight or less. Same as a battleship on defense and attack. And you can carry two of them on a, on a carrier. And you can project that threat onto sea or land. Handy, handy, handy. A little bit more expensive though, but I mean, you get what you pay for. Heavy armor, same kind of deal. If you're a ground and pound type of player like uh, Russia and Germany going at each other, or maybe you're the um, the um, British who are grinding on to, and Americans grinding into Japan on the land, or maybe uh, Germany on land, this might be a something for you if you're somebody like australia it doesn't really the, like there's you're hardly ever using regular armor so why are you buying these and japan's um heavy armor costs more than anybody else i don't even think they can build these but it, it's insane to buy them i believe they're um ten dollars for one of these and eight dollars for a regular tank where everybody else pays six and eight so yeah um advanced mech anybody again on the ground units if you can combine two advanced mechs with one heavy armor, you are amazing. Throw in a couple of tactical bombers with their target select of one to three, and you can just roll in on the enemy. And using your target select, you take off the advanced mechs as your hitters, and you got two fast, three fast movers room, moving as a group with the aircraft. You can blitz in there. Um, these guys can take the hits. These guys. These guys give the heavy hits on your side, and then you got those tactical bombers in there targeting the their heavy hitters while you just grind at them. You can just hit them for a round and then back off. You know, do the strafing attack. Excellent, excellent for anybody doing it. Like anybody with heavy armor, advanced mechs are a handy thing. Advanced artillery, like I already said, it's good for anybody and super cheap. Costs the same as a mech or the same as a, a light tank. And it gives you that first strike and it pairs with an infantry so it's a kind of an excellent option um okay i'm at 28 minutes already so i'm going to shut this video down and we're going to do um part two on the facilities and general effects technologies this is all the units technologies we're going to do uh, for part one part two will be facilities and uh, general effects like long range and stuff like that they're pretty these things are not as complicated as they sound i'm just trying to give you some options on when they would be effective to use as well okay and um yeah rc saying goodbye and see you in part two